today I am joined by, you know him from Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, Martial Outlaw, the TV show writer. You know this man from everything. He's the ultimate henchman, the ultimate bad guy. I am joined by the living legend himself, Mr. Al Leong. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing fine. I hope you are, too. I, I, I Normally, I always ask how you got started in acting, but in your case, how did you, uh, uh, how did you get started in martial arts? Well, I, I started martial arts when I was, I think, about eight years old. I was, my, my dad had sent me to New York, and then and, and there's a, the An Liang, An Liang Association. Uh, An Liang Tong is what it's called, you know, there. And I, I, I went there, and then uh, I got hooked up with some people. I started training back then there, yeah. What styles did you study? Because you seem I, to be I did, pretty uh, proficient well, in many. Uh, I did, I did praying mantis and I did a bunch of other stuff and then I went to five family style when I came to Los Angeles. Yeah. I fought a guy once uh, uh, that did the praying mantis. Got me right in the throat with one of those weird shots. It hurt like hell. <laughs> how, how did you get involved in acting? I, I, I'm not an actor. I, I'm a stunt person. I have no idea what an actor is. I, you know, they they call me to do, you know, to, to, to do a, a stunt part, and it'll, they'll throw a line in here and there. That's how I do that. But I am not an actor. I have no idea what actors do. <laughs> well, you're, and, and I, I, I don't want to talk too much about the movie because I'm sure you've been harassed about it for the last 30 years, but uh, you were in Big Trouble Little China. And, yeah, and John Carpenter is a fantastic guy. I mean, I mean, a real person, person, you know. Now, see, I'm not a Hollywood type of guy. A lot of people, you know, they're in the business and that they look at Hollywood as, you know, as like the best thing that ever happened, you know. But I'm not, I'm not in the Hollywood in believing that way. I'm still in the believing the people. And, and uh, John Carpenter is a real person, yeah, that you can talk to, yeah. One of the things I always liked about Big Trouble Little China was, uh, well, I mean, he was doing stuff like you hadn't seen in America, just like in Shaw Brothers stuff, but that he actually took groups of Asians and cast, cast them in the roles, the prominent Asian roles, where a lot of people yeah, still in that time yeah. were just using white guys and doing the makeup work, which I, I thought that really added to the charm of, the, of Big Trouble. Oh yeah, no, no. Again, like I said he did. A, he helped so many Asians. Uh, you know, uh, I know he had James Liu as a producer, and then he brought on uh, just a bunch of people, you know, that were Asians in in in, in leading sections of of the business. You know, which was uh, fantastic. I mean, people that did artwork and everything else that have never been in movie business that were Asian were put in by him. Yeah, you're still recognized from that film a lot to this day, aren't you? Uh, yeah, and I really didn't do that much in it, you know? But, but uh, again, like I said, I worked with him on a couple other films. Great guy, yeah. You know, then you got cast in one of the biggest movies of the 80s. Uh, you got to be with uh, Mel Gibson's first real big star, blockbuster role, Lethal Weapon. Yes, yes, yes. It's a, and Bobby Bass was a stunt coordinator on there. Another fantastic uh, stunt guy, fantastic guy, yes. You know, another movie that I don't know if you get asked about, I, I just watched it maybe a few weeks ago. You had a, a part in uh, Martin Cove's starring role of Steel Justice. What was it like uh, working with Martin Cove filming that Yeah, you know, Martin Cove, again, he was great. You know, back, back then, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know how he is now, but back then he was great. You know, I, I never had any problem with it, but, but yeah, that was a fun, uh, fun piece to work on too, yes. Then another one. That you worked in. I just talked to uh, uh, stuntman Bob Miner a little while ago. You got uh, to, another great guy. Great guy. Yes. You got to act with him in Action Jacksons. Is that the? Uh, what was that one like? That's a great, great underrated. Uh, film. Uh, yeah, it, it was directed by uh, Craig Baxley, mm -hmm. who's a stunt coordinator of A Team. You know, mm -hmm. and that's where he came from. But again, uh, a lot, a lot of fun, and and it was in a uh, great. A great piece to work on, and uh, he came from uh, 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 he came from uh, well, what do you call it? Uh, 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 the, the Hawaii show. What's a big Hawaii show? Hawaii Five O or Magnum? Mag Magnum mm -hmm. PI is is uh, uh, yeah, well, well, you know you you were saying uh, 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 I can't remember what you you were saying that was working with me on. Uh, on, uh, oh, on, uh, yeah, how much fun was it to, to do that film? 
Uh, you know what? Uh, it, was, it was incredible. It was a lot of fun. James Lee was on there. And, you know, yeah, well, we, we just had a great time. You know, this is what I try to do whenever I work. Well, of course, at the very beginning, you can't do this. And a lot of people today would not do this is once I got, you know, you know, known two, three years, I started picking and choosing what I wanted to do. And I did not do everything I was offered, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you're one of your most recognized roles, of course, Die Hard. You know, you're eating candy in Die Hard. You're a terrorist. Did you ever figure that when you were making that film that it was going to go on to be considered one of the greatest action films of all time? You know what? No matter what film you work on, you have no idea what's going to happen with it. But what I try to do is when I get on the set, I try to grab a script. You know, and even though I'm not an actor and I'm a stunt guy, I would try to grab a script because if I've got a script, I have an idea where the whole story is going. Because what I like to work on is pictures that have a story, movies that have a story, you know, because the, the, like today, there's so much stuff, it's just straight action. A lot of people like straight action, but I like to have a story behind what in the world is going on, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. What was Bruce Willis like? Because that was his first big, uh, not his big role, but that was what put him into the superstardom. At the time, fantastic. He was great. I, I think he had some problems later on, but during that time, he was great. That was a great movie. And then, if I'm not mistaken, right after, you got to go back and work with John Carpenter in uh, They Live. Am I correct? Yes, I did work on Yes, I did. I don't, I don't know if it was right after that, but yes, yes, I did work on that. And again, like I said, a great piece with, with uh, Jeff Amada, you know, being stunt coordinator. And yeah, it was uh, again, with, with John Carpenter, it's always great, yes. Did uh, you have anything to do with that, uh, what's considered one of the best fights ever, the big alley fight scene with Roddy Piper? And, uh, no, I, I had nothing to do with it. I was not even there. I was not uh, even there when it happened, yeah. What was uh, Roddy Piper like to work with? Well, you know, I didn't really work with him that much, but again, like I said, what I tried to do is get on something where the people are good, you know, and, and at that time, it was great, you know, yes. Then you actually had an, an acting role in the, the comedy Bill and Ted. You were Genghis Khan. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was, it was, again, another great picture, and both those guys were great, and, uh, and yeah, yeah, it, it, it was, everything about it was, it was, it was a fun picture to work on, and yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, again, I said, I, I didn't go on as an, as an actor, I just went on there as a stunt guy, you know, uh, that's my main thing, and then they put me in the movie, yeah, yeah. What was it like to be doing uh, something like that, more of a comedy role than as opposed to like the henchman type role? Uh, you know what? I guess I said, you know, I, it, it, it's all to me. It, it seems like it's all the same. You know, I, I don't really have that much differences this way or that way. Yeah, but I mean, if, you, if that was a comedy, that's great. You know, I mean, but but it's, I guess I said, the main thing is to have fun or whatever you do. Yes. What was it like working with Lou Ferrigno in Cage? That's a movie no one talks about. Uh, you, you know what? At the time, he was great. I, I, I really don't even remember the film that much. And in fact, when you brought that up, I'm trying to think of what was Cage. And I do remember I did work on that film, yes. Then you had a, a, a big part, a big, big production in uh, Black Rain. Uh, again, you know, a, a great, a great, a great movie to be working on. And yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but, I mean, uh, again, I said, uh, I don't know what to say about it. I mean, it was great and fun to work on. And, and that's the main thing is if you can get on something and, and you know, and everybody knows what in the world they're doing, it's that's great. I, I, I love anything Yakuza related. I find it fascinating. So, I, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm very much into that. Uh, that I don't want to say that culture. It's not like they would ever have me in their gang. But, uh, you know, they were, I, I'll, I'll tell you later. But, uh you know, well, I when I talked to Mr. Akamura the other day, he had a lot of fun talking about his Andy Sedaris roles as Fu, and you got to do Savage Beach with him. What what, what was it like for you on that on those sets? He said the sets were amazingly fun with all the beautiful women. Oh well, yeah, yeah, it's amazingly fun, and yeah, Andy Sedaris is a great guy. His wife's great. Everybody again, another great team of people, you know. And even though it was a low budget film, it's uh, the people that you work off that makes a difference. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, do you have fun working with Mr. Akamura? 
Yeah, uh, you know, I've worked for him many times in different places. I can't even think of exactly where, but again, like I said, he's a great person, and, and to me, that makes a big difference. Oh, yeah, he's one of the kindest men I've ever met. You used to do his Dragon Fest as well, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, he had, uh, he had a great show, and when he used to do it, it was really good, yeah. And then and then he stopped. I think it had to do with a money situation where where he was doing the, doing the thing and they kept raising the money on him saying they want more money. I think every year they start raising the money like crazy to the point where he said, you know, I ain't going to do this anymore if I got paid this crazy money just to, to try to run a show, you know? Yeah. You got to work several times throughout your career with uh, Van Damme, first being Death Warrant. Uh, you hear mixed. What was it like working with him? Well, again, like I said, back then... He was great. I don't know how or what he's changed or whatever. But but again, I said, oh, he did not want me to work on the picture. Okay, he he said he's got somebody that he wants a fight uh, coming from uh, from uh, up north. He said he's got a friend coming down. He's gonna fight. And I said fine because I'm just there as a stunt guy. And again, Jeff Amato brought me in, and he goes, he doesn't want to fight me. And I said. Fine, I said, and I told him, I told him, I said, I'm just done, guys, this year, I was asked to come on in, and I came on in, you know what, fuck me, that's fine. And then, I, I don't know what happened, but uh, the, the situation with him and his friend never worked out, and then I ended up fighting him, yeah. But again, like I said, at the time, he was a good guy, you know, I didn't have any problems with him, but, you know, I said, he's an actor, and I said that they, they're in another world, you know, so... His thinking and everything else, he don't want to fight me, I'm fine. Like I said, I'm just a stunt guy, you know, yeah. How how was his martial arts skills when you were doing the fight with him? Yeah, you know what he's he's okay. He's okay, you know. Uh, you know, the main thing that I don't like about what he does in this film is he likes double and triple cut the same shot over and over again, you know. And to me that's that's you know, that he doesn't have to do that, you know. But mm -hmm. I think he did that well on on a shot with me where he, you know, he does one thing and then he does, it's the same shot repeated, you know, and yeah, that, that, that is kind of a weird thing to me, yes. What was it like going back to work with uh, Craig Baxley in Dark Angel with Dolph Lundgren? That's one of my favorites. I'll throw with Matthias <laughs> who's one of my favorite people. Uh, again, you know, Craig Baxley is great. And, you know, uh, in fact, we'll talk about him a little bit later, too, is because, you know, I know from A-Team, he brought me on A-Team and let me do a ton of stuff on A-Team, which, which was great. But, yeah, he's always been, a, a, again, a real person. Like John Carpenter, he's a real person. And to me, that it makes a big difference that that, that way, yeah, when, you, when you're working with somebody that is real, you know, yes. Did you like that movie? Oh uh, yeah, I did. I, it was a lot of fun again, and it was fun. I think well, I think we went to Texas to shoot it, you know. But yeah, but again, I said, you know, whenever I work with Craig, number one, that is fun, you know, because we we'll always have a good time, and you know, I said we joke around, but at the same time, you know, when we need to get serious, we get serious. Yes. Yeah, I was. Uh, I remember seeing it in the theater, and you know, it was one of the first times I saw Mateus Hughes, and who I've been a big fan of his whole career. And then when I talked to him. You're picturing this big, menacing uh, man, and he's so well spoken. It's uh, it's amazing how he was able to play the bad guy so f effectively in those films. Oh, uh, uh huh, uh huh. But yeah, yeah. Again, I said everything with with him was all was always great. Yeah. You know, you worked with Mr. Baxley again in in what I believe is the greatest biker movie ever. You did stunt work in uh, Stone Cold. With Lance Henriksen, Brian Bosworth, great cast in that movie. Yeah, it was a great cast. Did I work on that? I can't remember if I worked on that or not. Yeah, you were one of the. You're listed in the credits as one of the stuntmen. Oh, that that then I did. Like I I I, I don't remember. I mean, I, I remember the movie. I don't I don't remember. You know, like I said, there's a bunch of stuff that. But people tell me you worked on this, you worked on that, and I said <laughs> I did. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, you know, again, like I said. Craig's always been a great guy, and you know, and and everything he does has always been great. Yeah, you know, and you know, Van Damme must have really liked you because you got to come back in Double Impact. Uh, Double Impact was I can't even remember what that was about. That was a lot of people remember it as just because he played twins. I remember it because it had Bolo in it. I don't think I worked on that. Oh, so it's another one they list you for. Oh, really? You know, I'm, I'm, maybe I did. I don't remember working on I'm trying to think of what I, uh, what I might have done on it. I thought the only thing I worked with him on was, you know, the other movie that you were talking about. You know, but I could have worked on it. I, 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 don't, I don't remember, though, yeah. 
I know James Lou got to tell the story about how he he got to stunt double as Bolo, and I was like, "Wow, that would be." A, that's a, I was like, I, "I can't picture you and Bolo switching places." But I went back you know, and watched the scene about seven times. You can't I look tell. nothing like him. <laughs> Bolo's a monster. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's a big guy. Yeah, but like I said I don't even remember working on that film, but I could have. Yes. Now, one that I've, I've been waiting to talk to you about. Um, Show down a little Tokyo. Uh-huh. Uh Probably I can I call it the greatest man movie ever. <laughs> eighty eight, barely eighty minutes of nothing but uh, violence and a little story. You know. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, with Bruce Lee's son. Uh, you know, he was great. He was uh, he was really good, really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had, and then yeah, yeah, and then I I saw him again on uh, Rapid Fire. Mm-hmm. You know, another great movie. That was a fun, very fun movie. Again with Jeff Amata and 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 uh, Dwight Little who directed it. You know, again, cast and crew, great. Yes. When you did showed out Little Tokyo, you know that was another one. You had uh, James Liu was back. Uh, Mr. Akamura was there. You had Dolph Lundgren, Brandon Lee. You know the all the Yakuza. Um, what was it like making that film? Was it hard or was it a pretty quick shoot? Well, well, well you know what. My, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you can only talk about the section that you worked on. When I worked it, again, it was fun and everything about it was, was really good, you know, but, but I mean, as far as I, I know, uh, we didn't go to Japan on that piece. Is that the one that went to Japan? I'm trying to think of. No, I, that one would no, probably no. filmed in LA, would be my guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was in LA. That was shot in LA in downtown LA. Yeah, uh, again, like I said, it, 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 it was a, a fun piece to work. I think Tia Carrera was on there too, right? Yes, yes, she was. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember hanging around with her, you know. So, Lucky yeah, yeah. But she's a great person. Yeah, she's a great person. Yeah. Did you know? Did when you because that was like Brandon Lee's first big film. Um, did you th- know think he was going to go on to be like his dad, or did you think it was just another level? You know, Tyson. I, I, I know. I, I had no idea where he was headed because, like I said, you know, I wasn't really following him that closely, you know, but. But no, he did, again, like I said, yeah, everything he did was great, you know, and he did a great job, you know, yeah, but, uh, no, no, I had no idea where he was headed, but, but everything he did was, was really, really good, you know, yes. You got to fight him in a rapid fire, correct? Yeah, and then what's good is he did the total fight. Remember, he's the actor. You know, a lot of times they, they bring in somebody to double him. He had no double. You know, it's just me and him, you know, so he did a great job. Yeah, yeah. And again, I, I was with Jeff Amon. It was a lot of fun. Yes. You did Double Dragon with Mark Dacascus, though, correct? Yeah, yeah. And that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, Mark, Mark Dacascus is an amazing martial artist. What was he yeah, like to guy. work with? Did he do his stunts, too? Yeah, 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 yeah. And again, I said, he's a great guy, you know, easy going, you know, no attitude problem, you know, so yeah, a very good guy, yes. You got to go back with John Carpenter for Escape from L.A. Yeah, yeah, again, a great film, and uh, yeah, and a lot of fun, a lot of fun, yeah, yeah. You know, that was the second time you worked with Kurt Russell. What was he like on set? Kurt Russell is great. Again, easy going type of guy, no problems, you know, just, just, a, just a real laid back type of guy, you know. See, when, when, when they talk to the stunt guys as regular people, you know what I'm saying? That, that, then, then you feel more relaxed, you know, because sometimes you get on a set and the actors have a lot of tension and they, 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 they want to go this way and they want to stay away from you and everything else, you know, but again, Kurt Russell, great, great guy. What was the best set you've ever been on? Do you have one? Well, the, the main thing that I can say is I try to make sure that everything I work on is good. I've been on some that I walked off of, but I really don't want to talk that much about them. I've walked off on big movies, you know, and people say, you can't do that, you know. And But the bottom line is, yes, you can, you know. And if people uh, say they're going to sue your ass, but the bottom line is, you know, for them to sue you, it takes a lot. You know, it takes them a lot, too, you know. Yeah. So, but I have walked, walked off on some, some movies that were very big, you know, and I am glad that I did. You know, because there were, they were like, the movies that I, I felt like, you know, that this ain't going to work out, and it didn't, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so, I, I, you know, like I said, uh, you know, a lot of people say you can't do that, you should not do that, and I agree to a certain point, you know, but the thing is, 
If somebody is yelling and screaming at you for no reason, I got to say goodbye. And that's yeah. what I did. Yeah. I had a big problem with a director, and it's a big film, and he just got on my ass, and the stunt coordinator's guy that brought me in, and he goes, let me tell you what's going to happen. Once he starts yelling at you, he ain't stopping, you know? So I talked to the stunt coordinator since he brought me in. I said, you know what? Do you mind if I leave this picture? He goes, go ahead. And I left it. Yeah. Hmm. That's just one out of three I think I left. Yeah. But this is a very, very big picture. And, you know, I said, you know, if things don't work right, I feel, you know, you should do what, you know, is best for you. You know, yeah. Were you on, were you in Lethal Weapon 4? Uh, yes, I was in Lethal, Lethal Weapon 4. And, uh, and I was on it for a long time. And then I did a fight. With uh, Mel Gibson's uh, oh. partner. Oh, Danny Glover. Yeah, I did a big fight with him. A big fight. You know, with, with, his, stunt, with his stunt double. And what happened was, I was fighting all week long. And then uh, uh, Joe Silver, who is on every picture, every single day he hangs out on, every single set that he works on, came up to me and he goes, you're dead in one. That's after we spent, like, unbelievable time shooting this fight. Then he just came up to me out of nowhere and said, you were dead in one. And so none of the footage, of course, was ever used. Yes. How come you think that happened? Well, I think it had to do with the fact that, you know, Jet Li is there. And when Jet Li's there, they, they, you know, they think he's, you know, God. And, you know, and, you know, I said, he's a good guy and everything else. But he's got, like, two doubles there and everything else, you know. But, you know. But it, I think it's basically known as his film when he's on the set, you know, w w w you know with the main stars, you know? Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. His, well, his first well video. but again, like I said, also, I was dead in one, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was his, his first big American film. Um, how was he? Was he uh, pretty humble, or was he excited? Oh, to you know, again, I said, that these are Hong Kong guys, and I have always found the Hong Kong guys, they stick to themselves. You know, he's got his whole group of, you know, like a dozen people, and they just, like, all hang together, you know. So, so I, you know, I really didn't get to meet or talk to them that long or whatever, you know, but but they, they seem like they do their own separate thing, yeah. Their stunt work's a lot very different over there, isn't it? A lot more wires and a lot more padding. Yeah, well, yeah, well, 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 now a lot of the films here are being done that way, you know. But, yeah, yeah, a lot of the films back then that they started for a long time ago, doing a lot of that wire work way before we did. But now I think we've taken a lot of their stuff and improved upon it, you know? Yes. It's always weird because I've, I've, since I was a little kid, I'd watch Kung Fu Theater, Shaw Brother movies, all that, and all the Jackie Chan stuff that he did in America, I wasn't a really big fan of. I loved his Hong Kong stuff, whereas Jet Li, I didn't care for his Hong Kong stuff. I liked his American stuff. It was very strange uh, how that worked out for me. Yeah, because you know what? I like... Uh, uh, Jackie Chan's American stuff better. And really? I'll tell you why. I mean, because, because he's the first guy that basically combined himself with an American lead actor. He, I say he's the main guy that was smart enough to do that. Mm -hmm. I wrote that in my book. So in my book, you'll see that. I talk about, you know, uh, him being able to, you know, cross the line better because he, you know, he made it work, you know. He got together with all these American actors and, you know, blended in a lot better, I think, than anybody. I always loved the fact that he could blend in the humor. Uh, that's what always set him apart for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good at that. Great at that, too, yes. What was the, you got to go back with John Carpenter and Ghosts of Mars. <laughs> Yes, I did. And again, another great, fun film, yes. Now, I think we shot in New Mexico. Here's an odd question. Jason Statham is, uh, from what I can tell anyways, an amazing martial artist, yet he didn't fight anybody in that film. Did, like, nobody realize that he could fight, or was it just not cast for him to do that? Any idea? I, I have no idea. All I know is I think that was, that's the beginning of him doing, you know, getting into a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah, because like his first four or five movies, he and he had a couple of Jet Li. He did nothing, and then all at once you see the transporter, and he's doing all these amazing stunts. It's like, yeah, no, 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 and he he, uh, he does, and he looks good too. Yes, yes. What was the Scorpion King like? Uh you know what? Uh, again, uh, uh, 
The Rock is incredible. Mm. Talk about a great guy. You know, this is a giant guy that, you know what? If he wanted to be an asshole, he could be, you know? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, what are you going to do, you know? But he was a great, easygoing guy. I loved working with him. Spent like six months with him, you know, and then just sending up all the fights and everything with him, you know? An incredible guy. And, uh, you know, yeah, everything about him was great. I'm a... Uh a wrestling fan and when he was still wrestling i got to meet him uh, backstage and he uh you know he's he was he was uh, the bad guy at the time he very, uh, it, it's scary because he was really big and now he's like three times the size but you know he he took the time he signed a couple things for me he signed something for one of my friends real nice polite guy i i never would have dreamed uh back then that he would go on to become the biggest star in hollywood but he does well, well he uh, you know what he has that type of attitude to be the nicest the best guy too though you know but yeah yeah he's done an incredible job and starting with that he was great everything about him was you know like very, again very down to earth a very normal type of person yes and then you also got to do a marvel movie you did some stunt work for the daredevil film on the Daredevil, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to work on Daredevil. Yes, yes, yes. So again, another fun film to work on. Yes. What's it like doing one of those superhero movies? Is it is it a pain or is it just... Well, 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 you know, like I said, I'm not the superhero, so you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's easy for me to do my part. It's, well, well, what I can like I said, what, what in a way I sort of don't like is the new film today, everybody can do anything because, you know, everybody's wired on a, on a rig and everybody's getting pulled back 40 feet and, you know, say impossible stuff. It's just like the old Hong Kong film, you know, everybody's flying all over the place and you wonder, well, how do they do that? Well, because now today, everybody's, every single film today is, you know, the heavy action and everybody and anybody can do it. Yeah. You know what I got to say, and I think about it because I've seen an unhealthy amount of movies in my life. The first American movie I think I ever saw, Wirework and the, the elaborate stunts, I have to say is Big Trouble in Little China. It, it, it did not have that much. did not have that much. Really? Uh, uh, Wirework and everything else, I don't think it had that much in there. I always remember the last fight when, they, when he's running, you know, very before Crouching Tiger, you know, you're running up the walls and doing the flips and all that. I, I really always thought that film was ahead of its time. It was way ahead of its time. It was. It was for 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 yeah. Was, I mean, uh, John Carpenter did an incredible job just just looking at all the Hong Kong films and then bringing it over here. You know, but yeah, he did a great job on it. Yes. What What's your as a fan? What's your favorite movie? Well, uh, 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 uh Big, big Trouble was great. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and again, when it comes down to working with people that are good, that's what I liked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Trouble was a lot of fun. So I like that, and I like working on it, yes. What did you like, <laughs> what'd you like better, doing movie or TV? Uh, you know what? Uh, I, I don't think it's... Well, the, the bottom line is... <laughs> I think... Uh, uh, but I think they're both they're both fun. The, the TV seems like they're more rushed. You know what I'm saying? Because you've got you've got you know like uh, seven days or eight days to shoot the whole project. You know, whereas feature film you'd be there for three, four, five months. You know, yeah. Do you uh, have any memories of uh, the episode of Renegade you did with Lorenzo Lamas and Branson? Uh, no, I remember they were great people. You know, Branson was a killer guy. Always has been. And yeah, yeah, no, the, the, both of them were great, and it was a fun show to work on. Oh, Bran Branscombe's awesome. I'm so glad I met Branscombe and Kathleen from that show. Uh, two of the nicest people I've ever met. Uh-huh, yeah, no, but they are. They are very good people, yes, yes. In fact, the next time you talk to Branscombe, tell him I won the three weeks paid vacation in Maui. I want him to pay for it for me, uh, and know, I'll be on my way over for two people. I'm, I'm going to talk to him <laughs> later today. I will let him know. I'm going to recommend it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just say, uh, for me to talk on an interview, that's what I want. <laughs> okay. Do you remember? Everything paid for. Everything paid for, yes. Uh, you can stay at it. He, he should put you up in a hotel, too, for this. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, okay. Now, can I say a few things? Uh, sure. Did I your chance? Of course. Okay. Uh, first of all, and I'm sorry, it gets to butter. I've got only one slice of gland. You know, so it's, it's weird. Okay, but I'd like to thank all the cast and crew behind camera that do their incredible work, you know, 
you know, makeup artists, everybody, you know, you know, uh, uh, grips, everybody, you know, lighting, everybody that behind camera, they do a world that makes the thing happen because without them, we would have nothing. Okay. So I just want to make sure that, you know, that everybody knows that. Okay. Oh yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> the, the behind the scenes people are the people that make it all happen. It wouldn't happen without them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now, back in about 1978, I met a guy named Kim Kahana. Oh, okay, he's a stunt guy, okay? okay. And and he was going to open a martial, I mean, a stunt school in Los Angeles. And he was a member of the Sunland Association, okay? Mm-hmm. And then, so, about that time, about, about uh, uh, 78, <coughs> he got in a huge uh, argument with Sunland Association because they did not want him to be teaching people that are not family or close friends, you know, uh, the, the, the art of stunt work. And he was going to go out and teach it, you know? So that they were really not liking him for doing that, you know? Yes. Okay, and, but he had this mindset and he was going to do it. And then so, so, uh, he was so ahead of his time that I thought that was great, you know? And so I decided, I met him at these karate tournaments back then, okay? And so what happened was, you know, I asked him, I said, can you teach me, you know, stunts? And this is what he said to me. He goes, I would never teach you anything. He goes, because you would take every single job away from me. <laughs> and he goes, I would never have you on there. Hang on one second, one second, hang on. And he goes, any director can pick you out of a crowd of a thousand people without any problems, is what he said to me. And then he goes, then he went on, he opened a school in Chatsworth, California. And I remember driving by the, you know, the little, the look at, look in to this huge lot that he had with all kinds of stuff going on in there. Hey, and parked in front are all these cars from Florida and New York and all these states from back east were there to take his course. I think it's like a six week course on doing stunts. Because remember back then, if you wanted to do any of this kind of stuff, there was no place to go. You know, mm-hmm. and like I said, he was hated by some of those things because of what he was going to do. You know, mm-hmm. so you can go there and learn how to do high falls, how to get on an air ramp, how to get a, get on pulled back on a ratchet, how to do the horse stuff, how to do motorcycle stuff, and how to do driving stuff. He had everything set up to do. Hey, I, to, I know these people paid a lot of money to take this course because a lot of these people end up sleeping in their cars overnight, you know. Mm-hmm. But the, he, he opened the school for, I think, about three years in Chatsworth, and then he ended up closing it up, I think, because he was had so much, uh, you know, talk from some association not wanting him around, so he moved to Florida, and he reopened his school. He, the school is still open now, you know. So he's been around for a long time. And he continued to open his school back in Florida. And like I said, he's still there now. And, you know, and but I get along with him great now, you know, because, you know, I, I yeah, when he was telling me, I did not understand what he said, that I would take all his jobs away, you know. Mm-hmm. But but so, so I, mean, I talk to him on the Internet and everything. Everything's fine between me and him. I, I, I don't hate the guy. I tell you what I do like about him. He came out and told me why he doesn't want me around because, you know, he let me know that. A lot of people won't say that to you, you know. Mm-hmm. And so for him to talk like that, I really liked it because it made him a real person to me. So I was happy with that. Yes. Uh, not Very Fun was doing a stunt show. Okay, now I'm done talking about him. But Not Very Fun was doing a stunt show. It was a great stunt show. And so I said, you know what, I'd like to mix some of this martial arts into the show, you know? So mm-hmm. I contacted the guy that was running the show, you know, over there. I I, I tried to call, call him and, and leave him messages, and I sent him two 8mm films of me doing martial arts stuff, you know, just seeing what he thought, you know? Mm-hmm. And at the time, uh, Carl Cefalio and Johnny Meyer, who are both great stunt guys, that, of course, at the time, I did not know, because we're talking about, like, 1980s, you know, they were both working there as stunt guys, but I didn't know them at the time, but, of course, afterwards, I met them, and they're great guys, but, yeah, but then I realized, of course, today, I look back, and I say, you know what, first of all, I can't be talking to the stunt 
the guy running the show because he's not the guy that runs uh, uh, Knott's Berry Farm. I should talk. I should have been talking to somebody at the, you know, above him. But at the time, I kept thinking, you know what? Maybe I'll try it. See if I can get into working on the show. You know. But yeah. So that's another adventure that I had. Well, okay. Yes. Yeah, so so I, I, in uh, back back at the very beginning when I got in the business, I worked on a film called a TV movie, TV uh, what do you call it? TV show called Street Hawk. And what happened was uh, we were on a boat in San Pedro, San Pedro Harbor, which is like the dirtiest place you could ever think of at night, okay? Mm -hmm. They set up three air rams. They were going to, I was one of the three guys that's going to get sent off into the dirty water, you know? And so, mm -hmm. so this is the first, like one of the first times I've ever seen an air ram. Now, air ram is a device that, 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 that picks you up in there and throws you, okay? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This is like a second or third time that I've actually seen one of them things, and it ejects you and throws you. So, well, the, I was a, a mechanic. I, I've been, I was in trade tech for two years. I am a painter, car painter. I had, I own color tracks, custom painting. I used to be a, bra a brakes and front end mechanic, and I used to do all the alignments and everything. I had a huge welder at my house, and I used to be a fabricator. So I have done everything. So, well, I, and I had a huge welder at my house. So, and I also had a two-inch pipe bender at my house. So I had everything. So I said to myself, you know what? I'd like to build these air rams, you know, because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have any problems making this stuff. And then what I would like to do is, you know, get in the business doing this kind of stuff. So I talked to uh, a couple, couple other guys, the Asian guys approached me. They said they'd like to get into it, you know. That was uh, Leland's son and Danny Wong said, said they'd like to get in and work with me on this stuff, you know. And, and so I said, I can build anything. So uh, in my parents' garage, I was building these air ramps. First, I was making a, a what do you call it? A, uh, uh, I was making a thing that, uh, a, uh, what do you call them, boy? I can't remember the word. A jig. I was making a jig. So all I do is put the air ram in this, in this jig and build the frame one after another, one after another. So, so I can make them real easily. And then I, I said, you know, I can build car flipping ramps, these six, 18 foot ramps, because uh, again, I'm a welder. I can weld this stuff up. I can make ratchets. And, and then, and we went out and we bought an airbag and we were going to, you know, use that on, you know, the, you know, the throwing people. Uh, uh, you know, for people to land on, and I said, then we could rent all this stuff out. Mm -hmm. And so, what happened was, uh, um, Leland's son, I talked to him. I said, we got to figure out what these devices are that are actually allowing you to launch people in the air. So he started to research it, found out there was aircraft landing gear is what they were using. So we went to all these, uh, what do you call these, uh, places that sold, uh, used, uh, and used uh, equipment for airplanes, and we found all these different type of, uh, the, the, uh, you know, extending devices that, that uh, served for landing gear, and, you know, we bought a bunch of them, and then, so I built these air rams. I built, like, eight of these air rams, and, you know, we were ready to go out and use them. And then one of the two guys, uh, I don't want to say who it was, but, but said they didn't want to buy insurance, because at the last minute I started thinking, you know what? We can't build these things, or we can't use these things unless we are insured. Because if we go out there and somebody does something weird on it or gets hurt on it, they're going to sue us. They're going to take everything we got, you know. So I said, can't do this, you know. Mm -hmm. So I talked to the two guys, uh, you know, that were, gonna, that were working with me. And I said, you know, we got to buy insurance. Well, one of the two guys did not want to buy insurance. And I said, well, you know what? We can't buy insurance. I don't want to take these air rams down. So I had all these things all built and everything else. But I said, you know what? We can make a lot of money in the business. I meant a lot of money. Because this is way back to the very beginning when I got into business. I said, if we put this stuff out there, because there's only like two other people that had air, had air rams, I said, we can get in and make some real money, you know? Mm -hmm. But again, I said, because of the problem of one of the two guys not wanting to buy insurance, I, I said, you know what? I, I don't want to do this. We'll take everything. And, you know, since I hand-built everything, you know, it, you know it, it didn't cost anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So we only had, like, uh, just a minimum amount of money in it. I said, you know what? 
we're going to just have to eat that money because um, unless we get insurance, I'm not going out, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how that thing got stopped. Okay, now I'd like to talk about some shows that I worked on. Sure. Okay, yeah. Heart to Heart was probably one of the first shows. It was done by Ronnie Rondell, who was a stunt coordinator, a great guy. Had a lot of fun with, you know, on that show. And then after that, I worked on uh, Fall Guy with Mickey Gilbert and his sons, uh, uh, T Troy, Tim, and Lance were his sons. Then I worked on T.J. Hooker with R.A. Rondell, who is Ronnie Rondell's son. And then I worked on... Uh, Night Rider with Jack Gill. Then I worked on Hunter with uh, Terry Leonard and about 50 other great stunt guys on a ton of other shows. But basically, I just want to let you know, that's how the show stuff got started, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, and then after that, uh, Craig Baxley, he does The Warriors. And The Warriors, I don't know if you've seen that. Everybody loves that film, and oh, it's God, a great yes. film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and so he worked on that. I didn't work on that before I knew him, but that, that's where he got started. And then, and then, uh, his dad, uh, Paul Baxley, who did all the killer stunts on Dukes of Hazard. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another great show. They had killer a lot of people in it. Then, uh, uh, then, uh, Craig Baxley did A Team. He's using people like Henry Kenji, who's another great stunt guy, flying all the cars around on that show, you know, but a lot of incredible show. Hang on. Then we talked earlier to Bobby Bass, who did uh, Joe Silver's Lethal Weapon, you know, mm -hmm. and then Charlie Petrini did uh, Joe Silver's Die Hard, you know, so yeah, yeah, it's just a ton of things that the end of the world Jeff Amato, of course, did Rapid Fire, and then Billy Burton did Scorpion King, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so that's it. Basically, I just want to mention some stunt guys that, were great, that did a great job, yes. Oh, yeah, you worked with all the greats, uh, behind the scenes and in front, of the, in, in, in front with you there in the camera. Yes, 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 yes. And a lot of the actors that were great, you know, but yeah, so the whole process was a lot of fun. And I got into business as a grip. That's how I got into, the, the, you know, I was a grip for like two and a half years. And then after that, you know, I got asked to do this and that, and and then I end up doing that, getting in stunts that way. Yes. Do you have any advice for people today that maybe want to get started in the acting or stunt business? Well, you know, the thing has changed so much, and it just seems like it's so much more difficult to get in there. But you know, I, I really can't think of any fast way because I think everybody goes in their their own way. You know, what I'm saying there's not like. One simple door, we're going to walk through this door, we'll be on the other side, you know. It just seems like everybody tries different ways to get in there, and they end up there, you know. But, yeah, I don't know exactly, you know, if there's a smooth way to do it or not. But what's not smooth for me? Do you, uh, are you, uh, for all your fans out there, do you have a website or are you online where people can follow you uh, and kind of keep up well, with you? Well, I, you know, I've got a site that's called The Henchman, but, but I, you know, I got so many people lined up, like there's over a thousand people trying to get in. I, I, I'm not a computer guy. I'm, I'm a computer idiot. So, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't even know how to put them on there, you know. So other people that I got friends that occasionally, well, of course, nobody's doing anything now because of the stupid ass virus. But, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, I had people come over and help me. Said, this is how you get people on your site. And I said, I, I can, if I turn on my computer, I'm, I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I think you are without a doubt the, one of the greatest henchmen in film history, and I can't I can't thank you enough for doing this interview with us today. It really means a lot. Well, it's great. You you do a great job, and like I said I hope everything goes well. I hope this virus ends like tomorrow. Oh God, yes. <laughs> this is just going on, unbelievable. You know, I thought it would have been done by now. I, I thought it was going to go on for like two weeks and, you know, we'll be back to normal. But, you know, it's, it's been unbelievable. I'm just hoping that somebody says, you know, I found uh, this miracle cure. You do this and, you know, that, that thing will totally go away. You know, never, ever. You know, you can't even write a movie about this, you know, because no. nobody would have ever believed it. You know, yeah. And it just keeps getting worse. It does. It does. Yeah. So I, I, I can't tell you what to do. Stay safe and Keep that mask on and and hope somebody comes up with this unbelievable cure and we can go back to somewhat normal. Oh, yes. 